welcome to our daily service and Happy New Year. And I trust that despite all that's happened over the Christmas holidays, your year has got off to a good start. This week we're reflecting on Psalm 95, a wonderful call to worship. So let's say together the first two verses. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. The psalm is a popular one and sometimes called the Venite from the Latin word for come. At one time it was said daily as part of morning prayer in the Anglican prayer book. And the verses we're looking at today give us the reason why we are to sing for joy to the Lord. Let's say them together. For the Lord is the great God, the great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth, and the mountain peaks belong to him. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands formed the dry land. The Lord is supreme over all. He is far above us in his greatness. He rules over our world as its king. He is unrivaled among all the gods of the nations. And he's the owner of all, from the depth of the earth to the mountain peaks and everything in between, it all belongs to him. The chaotic sea and the dry land are his too. And he's the creator of all. Our world is hand held and hand shaped, both by God. And the New Testament affirms these truths. The Apostle Paul writes, For us there is but one God, the Father, from whom all things come and for whom we live. And there is but one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom all things come and through whom we live. All three truths fit together to declare the greatness of God. And this is the God who we'll see over these next few days, shepherds us and speaks to us, and so we're to sing for joy. But when we do so, we're doing more than just praising God. As we worship, we're resisting how our world views our God. Because you see, this God of verses three to five is absent from and disparaged in the classrooms of our schools the natural history programmes on our TVs, and the shopping centres in our cities. But as we sing, we're shouting aloud and saying, no, our God is not some version of a supreme being who we look to for value and meaning, just like all the other gods in offer. No, our world does not belong to us, ultimately or to future generations, or to Mother Earth, or some life force. And no, our world is not an accident, the result of time plus matter plus chance. As we worship, we're pushing back and challenging the dominant culture around us. We're breathing a different air, a healthy oxygen, to the normal fumes we inhale. And as we worship, we're summoning people to come and breathe that air also, to leave behind their empty and wrong ways of thinking and living, and to join with us in worshipping the Lord, to experience the joy of praising him, to delight in his salvation, to burst with gratitude for who he is. And as we sing like that, we engage every part of us, our head, our heart, our hands. Our imaginations are captivated. Our loves and desires are reordered. Such worship resists our culture, summons each other and glorifies God for who he really is. The supreme owner, creator and great God. So let's do that now by singing our song for today. Creator God, who shaped the earth and heavens, your glory shines in all that you have made. You spoke the word who broke into. Oh, earth. 
replies, majestic is your name. Song fell silent as on the cross the light was pierced with dark. The word of life to death now hangs surrendered. The one who spoke our stars now breathe his last. And who Let's pray together. And let's begin with a prayer for our environment. Heavenly Father, thank you for filling the world with beauty and bounty in the cities and the country, on the coast and inland. You blessed the first humans and commanded them to fill the earth and subdue it. You supply seed to the sower and bread to the eater. But we and our ancestors have mistreated and damaged the environment. Even our best efforts have been tarnished with ignorance or self-interest. Please continue to bless us with a fruitful world and sustain us with the resources we need for life. Guide the nations and large corporations to seek cooperative and responsible ways of dealing with the environment. Give individuals the willingness to play their part in being wise stewards of what you have given us. May we look to you as the creator and sustainer of our world and give you glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A prayer for our rulers and authorities. Almighty Father, you are the great God, the great King above all gods. Please govern the hearts and minds of all who have influence and power. We pray particularly for our government at this time, for wisdom and skill, imagination and energy. As they deal with many complex and difficult issues, please help them to seek the common good. In Jesus' name, Amen. And a collect for today. O oh God, by the leading of a star, 
you revealed your Son, Jesus Christ, to the Gentiles. Grant that your church may be a light to the nations, so that the whole world may come to see the splendour of your glory. Through Jesus Christ, the morning star, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. And let's conclude our prayers by saying together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. As we go from this daily service, may we sing for joy to the Lord throughout today, because he is the great God and the great King over our world.